welcome to the dentist hub in our previous video we have learned about the definition the basic anatomy the risk factors clinical classification and features of varicose veins this video is a sequel to the previous one and in here we'll be learning about the clinical examination clinical tests investigations and treatment of varicose veins let us begin with the clinical examination Inspection of the affected limb is done in standing position of the patient and the examiner is supposed to look for any skin changes if present. Palpation of lower abdomen and pelvis is done in case of secondary varicose veins. If long saphenous vein is involved, the varicose veins are seen anterior to medial malleolus on the medial side of leg and thigh up to the saphenofemoral junction. If short saphenous vein is involved, varicose veins are seen posterior to lateral malleolus, back of leg up to saphenopopliteal junction in the popliteal fossa. The clinical tests. To begin with, we have the Schwartz test where the patient is in standing position and two fingers of left hand are placed on the saphenofemoral junction. Tap the most prominent varicosity with the right index finger and a palpable fluid thrill is felt at the saphenofemoral junction. Another clinical test is the cough impulse test where the patient is in standing position and the examining finger is at the saphenofemoral junction. Patient is asked to cough and the palpable fluid thrill is felt at the saphenofemoral junction. This indicates of the saphenofemoral incompetence. The Trendlenburg test. This is an important test in diagnosis of varicose veins. It is done in two parts. One to detect the saphenofemoral incompetence and the other to detect the perforator incompetence. Patient is asked to lie down in supine position and the lower limb is elevated to empty the dilated veins. The saphenofemoral junction is occluded with the thumb and patient is asked to stand quickly. After this, the two steps differentiate between the Trendlenburg test 1 and 2. So in Trendlenburg test 1, the thumb is released immediately after standing. If the filling is fast above downwards, it suggests of saphenofemoral incompetence. In Trendlenburg test 2, the pressure with thumb is still maintained. Gradual filling, if occurs below upwards, suggests of perforator incompetence. For short saphenous vein, thumb is occluded at the saphenopopliteal junction instead of SFJ. In multiple tourniquet test, patient is asked to lie supine on bed and the limb is elevated and veins are emptied. Four tourniquets are applied to occlude the saphenofemoral junction and perforators at three levels. Patient is asked to stand up and the tourniquets are released one by one below upwards. Sudden filling of veins on release of tourniquets indicate perforator incompetence. The Fegans method. It is done to locate the site of incompetent perforator. Patient is in standing position and dilated vessels are marked with pen. Then, patient is asked to lie down and the affected limb is raised. Palpate the line of marked varicosity and incompetent perforators are felt with circular openings and sharp edges due to the gap created by deep fascia. The Modified Perth's Test it is used to test the patency of deep veins. Patient is in standing position and tourniquet is tied at the saphenofemoral junction. Patient is asked to walk briskly for 5 minutes. If he complains of bursting pain in leg and specific varicosities become more prominent, this indicates the occlusion of the deep veins. Positive Perth's test is a contraindication for surgery of varicose veins. The 
investigations done for varicose veins is almost similar to the deep vein thrombosis. The Doppler ultrasound is useful in detecting the level of incompetence. Duplex ultrasound is most widely used and gives direct visualization of veins and gives anatomical and functional information. Venography is an invasive investigation and is usually not done as duplex scanning is widely used. There are three lines of treatment for varicose veins. The conservative method, sclerotherapy and surgery. Conservative treatment is indicated in old age individuals, in patients unfit for surgery, or presenting with secondary varicose veins or deep vein thrombosis. The measures taken are avoid prolonged standing, using elastic stocking during day, elevation of leg during night, exercise of leg muscles, and using drugs like calcium dobicillate. Sclerotherapy is used for venous blowouts and small varicosities with perforator incompetence. It promotes inflammatory reaction followed by obliteration of varicosity. Fine needle is used to inject sclerosant like sodium tetradecyl sulfate into the lumen of varicosity. Compression stockings are applied for one week. The indications for sclerotherapy are hemangioma, small varicose veins, hemorrhoids, and esophageal varices. The complications include anaphylactic reactions, skin pigmentations, skin ulcerations, DVT, and thrombophlebitis. There are three types of surgical procedures which are done to treat the varicose veins. The Trendlenburg procedure, the cockett dot ligation, and subfacial endoscopic perforator surgery. Let us now discuss each of these in detail. The Trendlenburg procedure. It is done in case of cephalofemoral incompetence. An inguinal incision is given and long saphenous vein is identified and ligated near the femoral vein. This is referred to as the juxtafemoral flush ligation. Another incision below 5 cm of knee is given. Long saphenous vein is identified and its lower end is ligated. Next, an incision is made on the vein and a metallic stripper is introduced into the vein and is passed through the vein and is taken out at the inguinal incision. A metallic head is connected to the stripper and the vein is avulsed. Tight crepe bandage is applied after the inguinal incision and is sutured and the limb is kept elevated. The cockett dot ligation is done in case of perforator incompetence. Perforators are identified and are ligated subfacially. It is also done using an endoscope. The subfacial endoscopic perforator surgery. It is a quick and simple procedure with least morbidity and is used to treat the perforators below knee. Small port incisions are made in calf region and are deepened through fascia. Carbon dioxide insufflation is done or balloon expander is used to distend the subfacial plane. The perforators are then identified and ligated. Hope you are clear with the clinical tests and the treatment of varicose veins. And the next video is going to be the last one in the varicose vein series where we will be discussing about the complications in detail. Thank you for watching. Do like the video if you found it informative. Share it with your friends and subscribe to the Dentist Hub for more updates.